We're used to SpaceX pulling off incredible achievements, but every time we think they can't take it any further, they prove us wrong again. They've just broken another huge record for the most rocket launches in a year, and in this video, we're going to break down exactly how they did it. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future updates. SpaceX has reached a point in 2025 that no other launch provider in history has come close to matching. By late November, the company has completed 150 Falcon 9 missions in a single calendar year, marking the highest annual launch count ever achieved by any nation or company. And the year is not finished yet. There is still more than a month left in the schedule, and additional missions are already lined up. The launch that brought the total to 150 was a rideshare mission from Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. This flight deployed around 140 small satellites. Like most Falcon 9 missions this year, the rocket lifted off, completed stage separation, and the first stage booster performed a controlled descent and landed successfully on a drone ship. This landing added to SpaceX's growing count of booster recoveries, which has now exceeded 540 successful landings across Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions. The booster used on this 150th mission was one of SpaceX's most heavily flown rockets. It had already completed 29 flights before this launch. Just a few years ago, even five flights on the same booster was considered ambitious. In 2023 and 2024, SpaceX began reusing boosters more than 10 times. But in 2025, consistent flights past 20 missions became normal, and multiple boosters have now crossed the 30-flight mark. A reusable booster eliminates the need to build an entirely new first stage for every mission. After stage separation, the Falcon 9 booster begins its recovery sequence. First, it flips itself around using small thrusters so the engines face forward. If it needs to return toward land, it performs a boost-back burn. As the booster falls back toward Earth, it does a re-entry burn to slow down and reduce heating. Four grid fins help steer it through the atmosphere. Just before touchdown, it performs a final landing burn with one engine and lands either on a drone ship or on land. When the booster is safely down, the recovery team secures it. The drone ship then returns to port, which usually takes a few days. After inspections and replacements are finished, the booster is reassembled and prepared for a static fire test. During static fire, all nine engines ignite for a few seconds while the rocket is held down. By 2025, SpaceX can complete this entire process in about three weeks for boosters that return in good condition. This fast turnaround is what allows SpaceX to launch multiple Falcon 9 missions per week and reach record-breaking numbers in a single year. Only in the first six months of 2025 alone, SpaceX completed 81 launches. That pace continued into the second half of the year, with several weeks featuring two or three launches. On some occasions, the company even launched two Falcon 9 rockets on the same day. One example happened in early November, when two missions lifted off from Cape Canaveral within three hours and 35 minutes of each other. This was the second fastest turnaround between two orbital launches from the same spaceport in SpaceX's history. A big part of SpaceX's launches in 2025 has been focused on growing the Starlink network. By the end of November, Starlink has more than 8,800 satellites in orbit, and almost all of them are working. No other company or country has anything close to this number. SpaceX's plans for Starlink are much bigger than what is already in orbit. They are allowed to launch 12,000 satellites, and they want to expand the constellation to more than 34,000 in the future. Some people think Starlink is just extra income for SpaceX, but it is actually the company's most important source of money. In 2023, Starlink made over $5 billion. In 2024, it made more than $8 billion. That makes Starlink the biggest part of SpaceX's business. Launching rockets brings in money, but it depends on contracts and customers. Starlink brings in constant monthly payments from millions of users around the world. This steady income helps pay for SpaceX's operations. A single Falcon 9 launch costs around $60 to $70 million. That means Starlink's 2024 revenue could cover well over 100 Falcon 9 missions by itself. 
This is why SpaceX launches so many Starlink missions every year. Each mission carries about 22 or 23 satellites, which helps the network grow quickly. This is why SpaceX launches so often in 2025. Most of these flights are Falcon 9 missions carrying Starlink satellites. Each one usually carries around 22 or 23 satellites at a time. What makes the Falcon 9 such a powerful and cost-effective launch vehicle is its ability to land instead of being thrown away. Most rockets in the world still fall into the ocean after launch and are lost forever. Falcon 9 does the opposite. SpaceX lands the boosters either on land or on special drone ships out at sea. This single feature removes the biggest cost in rocketry because the first stage makes up more than 60 to 70% of the total price of a rocket. SpaceX currently uses three main drone ships for booster recovery. On the East Coast, the drone ships are named Just Read the Instructions, A Shortfall of Gravitas, and Of Course I Still Love You. These drone ships wait hundreds of kilometers offshore so the booster can land safely after high-energy missions. On the West Coast, landings are supported by additional barges and platforms operating out of California. These drone ships allow SpaceX to recover boosters that don't have enough fuel left to fly back to land. Many Starlink missions, high-orbit deployments, and polar launches require drone ship landings because the booster is traveling too fast and too far downrange to return to the launch site. Landing on drone ships instead of losing boosters in the ocean gives Falcon 9 a huge advantage over other rockets. Almost all of their competitor rockets are fully expendable and are thrown away after one use, and Falcon 9 also reuses its fairings, which are the two clamshell pieces that protect the payload during ascent. Instead of letting them sink into the ocean, SpaceX equips them with parachutes. They splash down gently and are recovered by ships. After cleaning and refurbishment, they can fly again. Some fairings have already flown more than 10 times, saving millions of dollars across multiple missions. By reusing both the boosters and fairings, SpaceX cuts hardware costs dramatically. A brand new Falcon 9 booster is estimated to cost around $50 million to build, and the fairings cost roughly $5 to $6 million per set. When SpaceX flies a reused booster and reused fairings, the cost of hardware for that mission drops from more than $55 million to only a few million dollars for refurbishment and checks. With more than 150 launches by the end of November 2025, and the majority using reused boosters, the total savings are enormous. If SpaceX reused boosters for around 95% of those flights, they saved billions of dollars in 2025 alone. For example, if reusing a booster saves roughly $45 to $50 million per flight, then across 150 launches, the total hardware savings reach about $6 to $7.5 billion in one year. This is why reusability is not a small feature. It is the entire reason SpaceX can launch so frequently and at such low cost. Now looking at launch prices, Falcon 9 is also the cheapest rocket in its class. A Falcon 9 launch costs around $67 million for commercial customers. But this price is possible only because of reusability. If Falcon 9 were expendable, the price would be more than double. For example, each launch of Saturn V cost over $1 billion in today's money, and every part of the rocket was lost after a single mission. Falcon 9 is not as powerful as the Saturn V, but it is far cheaper and has flown more than any rocket in history. While Saturn V flew only 13 times, Falcon 9 can fly 13 times in a single month thanks to reusability and rapid turnaround. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.